Hey guys, Tom Quayle here. Hope you're all doing very well indeed. Uh, just a quick apology to say, sorry for not uploading anything recently to either Instagram or YouTube. Um, I'm hoping to do a video in the next few weeks on some of the stuff I've been going through physically and mentally as far as guitar playing and music goes. I've been doing a little bit of stuff, but i um, taking a bit of a break and I'm going to do a video about that. But today's video is all about this fantastic thing here. This is the Wong compressor pedal. This is a signature pedal from the guys at Wampler for the amazing Corey Wong. Now, first of all, I think they've missed a trick by not calling it the Wong Commander. That would have been amazing, but it is the Wong compressor. And it's essentially a compressor and boost pedal and DI box all built into one kind of small form factor pedal here, which is amazing. So all the features that Corey Wong decided he needed in a compressor pedal. So essentially the compression side of this pedal is similar in nature to the Ego compressor. Now I don't know if it's the same circuit or not, it may not be, but feature wise it's very very similar in that you've got a tone control on there, attack, and you've also got the ability to do parallel compression via the blend control on here. That allows you to dial in really heavy kind of uh, compression settings but retain a more natural sound but have the sustain that's provided to you by some of those more heavy compression settings which is great. Now as far as the boost goes we've got a switchable full or mid-range boost on here with its own dedicated foot switch and these are non-latching foot switches in this case which is a nice little wampler upgrade. Uh, same thing happened to the dual fusion, great because they last longer than the latching foot switches. Now on the side here You'll also see a little button, it's labelled here, comp on, and this allows you to uh, have the compressor always on without having to use the foot switch here. So if I press the button, you will see the green LED that indicates compressor on stays on now, and it doesn't actually matter what I do with the foot switch, that's always going to be on. So if you're the kind of player, and I'm presuming because that switch is there that Corey does this quite a lot, if you're the kind of player that needs that compression to always be on, then that's a really useful feature. So every time you turn the pedal on, it's gonna be on there for you, which is great. The XLR here on the output stage for the DI is fully balanced and has a ground lift on there as well. So for a lot of guys these days who are using DIs, either because I'm presuming in Corey's case, it's kind of de rigueur for the music that he plays, so he wants the DI in there as well, or for recording where you record the DI and then you want to reamp it later, this is a fantastic solution because it's built into the pedal board, and we've got the DI out on there as well. One thing to consider is that, as far as the DI goes, um, Wampler have started using top-mounted jacks. They've been doing this for quite a while now, for pedal board kind of space saving. Well, obviously the DI sticking a big XLR on there is gonna um, kind of mean that you have to space your pedals out a little bit more. But you can see with those top-mounted jacks just how close uh, I can get these other pedals here. So I've got the Triumph and the Dual Fusion here, very, very close indeed. So as far as pedal board real estate goes, it's great. Then we've got the center negative 9 volt input on there. This pedal does not take 18 volts. So if you've been running 18 volts on some of your other pedals, like the drives, for instance, from Wampler, you cannot do that with the one compressor. It has to be run at 9 volts. It's very explicit in the manual. Okay, so that is the feature set that we've got in this pedal. It sounds amazing. I'm going to give you some demonstrations. As far as the signal path goes, uh, my signature Ibanez uh, TQ MS1 guitar here, and that's running into the one compressor, the Triumph is just here to show you the kind of pedal board layout that you could get with the top mounted jacks. That's then running into the Dual Fusion. We're gonna be using channel one, which is then going into a Laney Lionheart two by 12 combo, uh, 20 watt amplifier, and then that's running into the tube amp expander, which is going into my DAW. So you're hearing IRs with an SM57 and a Royal 121 going through a one by 12 cab. So on the neck pickup, the clean tone sounds like this. <laughs> Nothing too crazy, just a really nice clean tone with some delay and reverb added in post. So let's turn the compressor side on first and the blend is about halfway. Most of the controls are about halfway up, but I am adding some volume. And immediately you can hear that sparkle and that kind of slap from the actual compressor here, but it's still pretty transparent and natural sounding. <laughs> So 
still got great dynamics, but listen to the sustain. <laughs> Tons of sustain through the amp. Now, if we crank the sustain further, bring the blend down a little bit. And we, as we, basically, what you want to do is with the blend control, as you blend out, you need to add volume if you want to keep the volume the same. So we'll add a little bit of volume. Amazing amounts of compression. So really, really cool. Now, as far as the attack goes, it's about halfway up. And as you dial to the right you get longer attack time, so you get more pick transients, so we're about halfway. So again, it retains some of that natural kind of flavor. But feels really, really easy to play. Now at this point, again, I'm not boosting things too much. We've got the same, roughly the same volume with the compressor as we would with the amp. Okay, so we can boost things a little bit further here. And let's add a little bit more blend in, bring the sustain back, and we'll pull the attack back. And now we've got quite an aggressive compressed sound. And we can blend in even further to get even more. And again, we need to pull the volume back. So there you can really hear the pump of the attack. Great sound, really, really, really cool. Now with the tone control, I like to add in some high-end sparkle. So with this particular pedal, same with the Ego, I like to run the tone control quite high. It's subtle, but you can hear the extra added high-end in there. Apologies for the, the noise in my studio. dial the turn control back. We've still got the kind of slap and the brightness, but it's not got that sparkle on the top end. So this sounds great when it's kind of dialed up. Especially on those kind of mid, kind of middle positions or two and four on a strap middle position on this uh, T-style guitar. So that's the compression side, really, really nice. Let's pull the blend back uh, and bring the attack up. In this case, when we get more transparency. Okay, so the boost side, let's switch off the compressor. Again, the clean tone here, go back to the neck pickup. Now I have to be careful here because there's an insane amount of boost available here. Let's switch, oh, we already are on the full range mode. So we'll leave it there. And when I add in the boost, you can see where it's set. It's adding a lot of girth and volume to the signal, but we maintain the dynamics. Take it back out again. Switch over to the mid boost.
off again. So the boost is really useful and it's the kind of thing that you would probably just leave on all the time to add that kind of dynamic range and girth to your amplifier, especially if you've got kind of an anemic kind of guitar or amp signal in the first place. So let's combine both of these things now, the compressor and the boost. Now at this point, I'm kind of clipping the front end of my preamps here. So we'll turn it down. Great, really, really, really nice. Very, very useful. Let's switch both of these off. So let's go to the Dual Fusion here, channel one, and we're gonna use it to push the front end of the Dual Fusion. So here is on the neck pickup again, channel one, not too much gain. Okay, let's add in the boost. as well. There you have it guys, that is the one compressor from the wonderful chaps at Wampler Pedals. Uh, it's fantastic, really, really great. And I think this is gonna fly off the shelves, partly because of the Corey Wong Association, obviously one of the biggest names in the guitar world at the moment. But also it's a fantastic combination of all of the best features of the Ego compressor, but with a really great switchable boost and that DI out on there as well. So as a utility always on pedal on your, um, you know, your pedal board, it's gonna be really, really useful. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you click the link down in the description below, you will find a link through to Wampler's website where you can purchase the pedal. And obviously you can pick it up from your local Wampler dealers as well, or check it out in store if you want to try it for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons below. Obviously you guys know the drill for YouTube these days. And of course that all important bell button to be notified every time that I upload new content, which I'm gonna try and do a bit more going forwards. Uh, if you want to support me in all of my work, guitar playing and music in general, and this video content, you can click the links in the description below as well to check out my lesson material. There's tons of stuff on visualizing the fretboard, legato playing, how to improvise, you know, all sorts of theory concepts. And you can check out my app, Solo, which has been doing insanely well. It's been amazing to see how many of you guys have checked out the app. So thank you to everybody who has done so far. And that app is probably one of the best resources available in app form for learning to visualize harmony on the fretboard. All right, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. My name's Tom Quayle, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.